Hello Rotten and Mightscar fans, thanks for, thanks for tuning in to another Rotten and Mightscar video. My name is Thijs, aka The Shame Painter, and today I'll be showing you how to paint up a uruk warrior from the forces of the Dark Lord, Saruman. Uh, it's a, a classical miniature from Games Workshop, but it's still very awesome to paint. And I'll be showing you how to paint those metallic parts, really grim dark and uh, worn out, uh, ready for battle. Uh, I hope you enjoy this video. Um, you can, if you can, please subscribe to our channel. It's free, and also like this video. It helps out a lot in uh, in growing our channel. And uh, yeah, stay tuned and let's get started. So, guys, this will be the final result for our second episode, the Urukai Warrior. Um, yeah, let's get started. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And we're gonna make uh, a very simple model look awesome and make it look like we put in a lot of effort with some simple techniques and simple steps to make it look like we did a lot. <laughs> so, we start out with spraying the model uh, LED Belcher from the Games Workshop uh, spray can. Um, so if you want to do an army, this is a really easy first step. And uh, what we start to do is blacken the armor with uh, black Templar contrast paints. Uh, the reason we do this because we want to give an iron look to uh, the armor plates, not necessarily uh, very high grade steel. Um, I actually know a lot. About the differences when we look at those because uh, my dad owns a iron made uh, sailing vessel so we know exactly what the differences are between iron and steel but that's just a coincidence so we do the iron and steel this is a darker uh, base color for uh, uh, for metallic steel look also the iron look we just dry brush it on there to give some contrast and some uh, definition and a Runefang steel for the edge highlight. We will use uh, Runefang steel uh, uh, as, the, uh, as it gives a little bit of a polished look. So every part that brushed against uh, some cloth or against some uh, scrubbery that will be painted uh, a brighter tone um, because it will look a bit polished. Also the places that are being hit in battle should have a little bit more sheen to it than uh, yeah, so some parts of the armor that aren't that in combat. Uh, just like the scratches on the shield, just give it a little bit more detail and also a little bit more definition. I think this works out pretty great. So this is one of my favorite tricks. Use skeleton hoard to give a dusty look. As if there are some dust deposits or sand or dried mud or uh, just grime in general. Uh, I used this uh, in one of my earlier tutorials for the uh, for the Iron Throne, how to paint the Iron Throne for Game of Thrones, and it works out great. It gives a really uh, grimy look uh, without going with streaking grime or heavy. Uh, we don't want to go for uh, the heavy uh, weathering uh, stuff, um, but it, it just gives them a little bit nice definition. J just like Scrag Brown, we will use very diluted Scrag Brown. Almost like a watery, uh, uh, yeah, wash, and give some rust definitions in certain parts. The trick of this is don't do every part, uh, and also uh, don't use symmetry in your weathering. So never do the bottom left and the, the bottom right corner. Uh, try to do the, the bottom left and the top right corner, for example, or use one uh, and. Uh, if you have a breastplate, for example, always do a bit more on the left side and the right side, or the right side, left side, uh, um, but never uh, <laughs> apply it as equally as you would probably want to do with a base coat or some other effects. So weathering should be a little bit more natural, so also a little bit more random. So for the uh, surprisingly, the model still has a lot of skin showing. So for this part we use the Tusker fur because that's the preferred uh, color in my opinion for Urukai flesh. Uh, also for the Berserker, if you want to know more about Urukai flesh, I would recommend you to watch the first episode of Wars of Middle-earth. 
because in that video I was sh I showed you how to paint uh, a larger amount of flesh and also gives you a little bit more insight in that part. Although there are multiple ways to do the um, the flesh uh, for the for the for, for the urukai, urukai of course, um, the base will always be uh, just core flesh in my opinion. I use Rhinox hide to uh, to give a pretty dark color for the leather parts. Uh, I would normally start with Tondia brown, but I want to change it up a little bit. I will go back with Tondia brown, which is the new, more greenish brown color, a bit rotten brown color from Games Workshop. But it's a pretty great model for orcs and urukai, uh, a color for urukai and orcs, but. I want to do a bit more quicker and also did the hair with Ryan's height because that's a better color in my opinion. And the dark color also stands out a bit more on the Uruk flesh as that also uh, yeah, has to be a bit more defined. So we use dark oath flash contrast paint. Um, sorry for the, <laughs> the fuzzy uh, video sometimes. I'm uh, currently uh, also installing a, a second screen so I can actually watch what I'm filming, which would also uh, help out a great deal uh, for my tutorials. Um, but dark out flesh to give a little bit more uh, warmth and also more definition in the flesh tones because Tusker fur is too much pink and doesn't really have the flesh tones. And the contrast paint also gives a bit more wet look to it. So that's also a really big benefit for, uh, for the dark out flesh uh, contrast paint. Just and after that just repaint after it's dry as you can see it's somewhat in the crevices of the knee it's still not completely dry but i'm a bit uh, hasty <laughs> um i repainted everything with um tusk or fur and then you give a final highlight with night quester flesh um and that's it for the flesh um i really think that if you put a little bit more attention to the armor panels um for this model, it really uh, creates more detail than that model actually has, because it's a very, it's quite an old model. Uh, but using a little bit more definition, using a little bit more weathering, uh, giving a little bit of the slash marks on the shield, for example, really makes it pop. Uh, so this is the Tondia Brown, which will be used as a layer for uh, uh, the leather uh, bits and for the hair. Surprisingly, this model has a lot of hair. Uh, I never noticed the Urukai having that much hair um, until I've painted uh, the, this model. This is also my first Urukai, war Urukai warrior model that I've ever painted. Um, with such detail. And then you're finished, guys. Uh, just uh, finished the base. And uh, if you like this series of Wars of Middle Earth and you like our channel, please consider subscribing and liking our videos. And also, special thanks uh, for our patrons. Um, I hope to see you next time, up to episode 3. Mm -hmm.